is Wadsworth Homecoming 2022, and it's week number eight of the Ohio High School football season. And tonight, it's a non-conference matchup. The Austintown Fitch Falcons will take on the Grizzlies in what may be one of the most interesting games to watch here in Northeast Ohio. A Grizzly win will put a big stamp on their season with two conference games remaining against North Royalton next week in Twinsburg the following week. Hello once again, and thank you for joining us for another WCTV production of Wadsworth Grizzly Football. I'm Mike Elkins, along with my partner, Robert Rickenbacker. And well, the Falcons, they come in tonight, Robert, at 6-1 and one on the season, and they are coming off a 35-3 win last week over Strongsville in the first ever meeting between those two schools. Uh, the Falcons are currently ranked 14th in Division Two in the state of Ohio and 4th in Division Two Region 5 in they are behind Painesville, Riverside, Hudson, that we saw a few weeks ago there at number two, and Hoban, of course, at number one. Their only loss of the season, well, that came in week number six as they traveled to Paul Brown Stadium and lost to the Maslin Tigers 49-28. to The Grizzlies are 5-2 and two overall. They're currently ranked third in Division I, Region I, and they are behind number two, Medina, and number one, Lakewood St. Ed's, in the computer poll rankings. Now, the Grizzlies, they've won two of their last three, including last week's dominating win against the Bulldogs at Stowe, where we saw the return of senior quarterback Luke Fisher. Yeah, Mike. Oh, boy, did Luke Fisher return in style. He was nearly perfect on the night. He was uh, 18 of 21 for 298 yards, four touchdowns, and for good measure, he had one rushing touchdown as well. So uh, here's the National Anthem. We'll take a break for the National Anthem. We'll be right back. Excellent job. Um, his four TD passes went to four different receivers, Luke Fisher's did. Uh, he hit Aaron Keene for a 12-yard touchdown, Davis Nye for a 51, Tommy Arnold for a six-yard touchdown, and Drew Jones got a 30-yard touchdown. In doing so, he picked up the Medina's Gazette Player of the Week honors. Now, with Luke back, now here's the bonus to that. Luke's back, we get ultra-talented Will Stack back at receiver, which is a huge deal here. As, uh, as they they went on to connect for six times that night for 88 yards. Now, Wills didn't get in the end zone, but he sure made, was slick with carrying the ball when he caught it. Uh, he, he had some great shifty moves. Now, now, it was a dominating performance all the way across offense, defense, special teams. Um, Fisher led the Grizzlies offensively in six consecutive touchdowns, mm. not counting the one right before halftime when they ran out of time. So... Welcome back, Luke Fisher. Makes the whole team a complete different ball game. Luke uh, moving Will Stack out to the side there. Now, as I said, now Davis now had three catches for 67 yards. Drew Jones three for 66. Tommy Arnold had two for 20. Uh, Will Stack, like I said, had six for 88. Cal Figueroa got in on the action with eight carries now for a measly 83 yards and a 35-yard touchdown. Defense was stellar as usual. As usual, they only need 49 plays to hold the Bulldogs to three points on the night. Their starting defense only gave up 122 yards. That's phenomenal. Um, now, in the last four of the past six. Nine, 
So they haven't played a lot of great football teams. Of course, Maslin, uh, Tigers, very good football team. Yeah. And, of course, there's a good look at uh, our Grizzlies as Brayden Probst is, uh, you know, getting these guys excited. This is a big football game for the Grizzlies. Boy, a win tonight, man. It just puts a stamp on this season as they charge onto the field here as we're just a few moments away from getting this one underway. But a couple of players we want to watch tonight, of course, quarterback, junior, number nine, Deshaun Vaughn. He's 5'10", 175 pounds, and he is a dual threat for this Falcon offense. Their running game is charged behind the power. Big Ray bounces it right, has a hole. Still on his feet. Yeah, Kyle Figure mm -hmm. just refuses to go down. He's a short gain on the play of maybe three or four. That'll bring up. take a look and see what happens nice kick out block there by Arnold very nice kick out yeah, block. that's a couple of kick outs and oh oh number one Cam Smith goes down low and uh, he goes down low to take out the legs of Figure just as he plants that left leg and you got to wonder if the helmet is on the knee and does he have a bruised knee? Well, He's up. That's good. It, it, didn't, it didn't look like anything was twisted there. It looks like that helmet went right on the knee or the shin. And that will smart, folks. Ooh, on your shin, absolutely, yeah. any day of the week. Uh, that, he's up under his own power, and he looks like he's going to be okay, and we'll expect to see Figure back in this football game. It doesn't look like he's limping. I, I think it was just a, maybe a helmet to that shin. That, that smarts. You feel that in the morning. Yes. <laughs> You'll feel that for a couple weeks. First and goal now at the three-yard line. Yeah, Nathan Metzger, number 15, checks in for Figure Ball placed at the three. It was nice to see Nathan get his first touchdown last uh, last week against Stowe. 
And there goes Nathan Metzger. Just gets to the line of scrimmage, and he's piled up. And yeah, Metzger doesn't want to go down either. And, you know, that, that's part of that mental game that, that, that you want to get into your opponent's head. You're not going to take me down and see if they give him a gain of one on that. Nathan Luke Metzger Fisher Nigeria. just checks out, and looks like Will Smith is checking Will, Will Stack. Stack. I'm sorry, Will Smith. No. <laughs> it's just quite the same kind of star power here. But uh, Will Stack checks in at quarterback. Yeah, Will Stack really good at that uh, run read option. I would have to think he's stretching. Well, we're going to have encroachment on the Falcons. That'll push us half, half the distance. Half the distance. So that'll go just outside the one yard line and now. Here we go. Kyle Figure does check back in. Good to see him jogging onto the field. Yeah, Will Stack remains a quarterback. And yeah, this is that versatility in, the, in, in this offense that, that uh, Will Stack gives you. Yeah, now you have to count for the, run, the quarterback to run too as well. There goes Davis Nye. Fakes the jet sweep and Will Stack steps in the end zone for the first score of the night. Now that's a beautiful play call. Was. Absolutely beautiful play call by this Wadsworth coaching staff. Head coach Justin Todd to see the fake to Davis Nye and a nice job on the kick out block there. The lead block through the hole is Kyle Figure and Will Stack walks in untouched. And as you see, if you see that again, you see them have to respect Davis Nye on the jet sweep and you see it widen out. The players widen out and that hole just opened right up. Nice yeah. job. Pass go to hold and winning on for the PAT. Kick is up. It is good. And Pasco looks like he had to handle a little lower snap, and he did a good job getting it down. Uh, you, you know, you're right. you got to respect the jet sweep with Davis Nye. You see number, looks like number nine, and that's their strong safety and quarterback, Deshaun Vaughn. He's the one respecting Nye in that jet sweep. And Kyle Figure will lead the parade into the end zone for Will Stack. 7-0 lead. That's big. First score of the night. Looks like they gave him two yards. See how tight the backers are playing for the Falcons up to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Almost like standing yeah. defensive linemen. Five man front almost. Yeah, this is the chaos that I just talked about a few minutes ago that they like to create. And then they'll they'll bring one or both of them on a on a blitz. They'll bring, well, they got six in the box now. Down to four seconds on the play clock. Fisher gets it off, throws. Caught by How Davis Nye. Goes through Tommy Arnold's hands and into Davis Nye's. Well, that's just incredible focus for Davis Nye as Robert called it. As the ball goes right through the hands of oh, the, no, Vaughn. Vaughn. <laughs> Vaughn's, right hands. Vaughn's hands. Here's Fisher back to throw. Wide open in the middle. Incomplete. Pass intended for Tommy Arnold. Now, Fisher had pressure. He ended up on his back. And hurried to get that throw off. We'd love to have that one back because Arnold was open again. Yeah, and that's, you know, when you're going to bring six guys in the box, you're going to leave the middle wide open. 
It's just a race to get there. Who gets there first, through your quarterback or he gets it off to your receiver? Brings up second and 10. We're down under five minutes in the first half. Tom Arnold goes in motion. He's dropping back the throw. He has Keating open. Touchdown, Grizzlies! There we go. That's the way to come back and answer. Yeah, the Grizzlies doing a great job answering that kickoff return for a touchdown for the Falcons. And Aaron Keating with his second reception. And that being a touchdown. And that'll put the Grizzlies ahead for the moment. 13-7 pending the PAT. Fisher with plenty of time. Play action. Fisher all the time. His eyes are on Keating. Keating gets behind that secondary. And finds Pater and beats Iowa State recruit Cam Smith. And hello, we are here with our cheerleader of the week, Lily Frank. Mm -hmm. And Peggy, why did you pick her? So I chose Lily this week. She is one of my seniors. Um, she is a very positive, quiet girl, but sometimes it comes out and she gets a little crazy. Um, but I love her so much. She is a very positive person. She does a great job on the sidelines. She's always smiling she does all of her tight motions everything about her i am very proud of her I'm very proud to be our coach lily what does it mean for you to be a cheerleader especially in your senior year um it's really exciting kind of nerve-wracking too just because i just want to have a good year but it's really good what advice do you have to any girls that are looking to try out for the cheering team in high school um, just have a positive side on things. I mean, it's better to be, um, think positively than to think down on yourself, and it'll help a lot. Well, thank you so much. This week's sponsor is Dulce, and the card is also a duel because you can <laughs> also use it at the Valley Cafe. So there you go. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you're going to eat up time, I love the Davis Nye across the middle on a drag route. It have to be a deep drag route, but they kind of forget about it. You know, Fitch has it on the one time they tried it. Yeah. But if you can yeah. get him lost. Well, again, you know, you've got all kinds of options. Um, Aaron Keating will stack if you get them on the outside on a crossing pattern, confuse the defensive backs. They're definitely going to be in zone coverage. Yeah, yeah they're, they're just looking for the deepest guy to pick up and cover. For more information. It'd be really nice to stick it in here, you know, get some points here. But now, one thing we got to come up, we do get the ball back in the first half. Yeah. We get the kickoff, so yeah. that's huge. Yeah, that's why it's important whether you get a field goal here or a touchdown, you got to put some points on, on, on the board. And definitely out of Jack Dinwiddie's range here, this would make it a 43, 50-yard uh, field goal attempt. And um, that is not within his range.
Now under the direction of Dana Albrecht Heyer, Sam Peel, student teacher Jonas Piscotch, percussion director Ryan Louie, and percussion tech David Selzer, and color guard directors Vanessa Lloyd and Jessica Corson. This is the 2022 Wadsworth High School Marching Band. On the field, the band is led by drum majors Ada Wagner, Colin Moore, and Anna Wallace. Good evening and welcome to the 2022 Homecoming Ceremony. The first attendant is Miss Lexi Dunn. Lexi is the daughter of Jeff and Vicki Dunn. She plays on the high school tennis team and the track team and is a member of the National Honor Society. After high school, Lexi plans on attending Tri-C to major in cardiovascular sonography. Lexi is escorted by Mr. Luke Ramsire. Luke is the son of Dean and Julia Ramsire. Luke is on the Huddle football team, participates in track and field, and is a member of Huddle. The second attendant is Maya Garcia. She's a the student body president, the varsity volleyball captain, and a member of Medina County Teen Court. After high school, Maya plans on participating in an accelerated law program in hopes of becoming a family lawyer. Maya is escorted by Mr. Solomon Callahan. Solomon is the son of Scott and Marquisa Callahan. He is the senior class president, plays on the varsity baseball team, and is the captain of the varsity basketball team. After high school, Solomon will be attending Wright State University on a full athletic scholarship. He will play basketball for the Raiders and major in business. The third attendant is Miss Emma Tibbetts. Emma is the daughter of Robert and Christy Tibbetts. She is a member of the high school band, participates in choir, and performs with the Winter Guard. She is also a member of the high school tennis team. After high school, Emma plans to attend college and major in history. Emma is escorted by Mr. Benny Miller. Benny is the son of Jim and Lori Miller. He runs on the cross country team, is a member of the lacrosse team, and participates in choir and drama. After high school, Benny plans to major in early childhood education at Kent State University. The fourth attendant is Miss Julia Fortner. Julia is the daughter of Dr. Dale and Debbie Fortner. She is a leukemia and lymphoma student visionary, plays on the varsity girls lacrosse team, and is a member of the National Honor Society. After high school, Julia plans to attend college and get a master's degree in anesthesia. Julia is escorted by Mr. Aaron Keating. Aaron is the son of Joe and Kathy Keating. He plays on the high school football team, is a member of the high school baseball team, and enjoys playing frisbee golf in his free time. After high school, Aaron plans on attending college to continue playing baseball while studying finance. The final attendant is Miss Haley Porter. Haley is the daughter of John and Dawn Porter. She is on the high school track team, participates in the Recycling and Environmental Club, and is a member of the National Honor Society. After high school, Haley plans to attend college and earn an undergraduate degree on a pre-med track. Haley is escorted by Mr. Miles Fortner. Miles is the son of Tom and Joy Fortner. He has taken part in 14 musical and stage productions for school and community theater. He has performed a musical number written and produced by Sir Tim Rice. He enjoys writing and creating music and designing and creating costumes. After high school, Miles wants to pursue vocal and music studies with a minor in music business and an emphasis in songwriting and producing. To present the crown is last year's queen, Allie McCall. She is currently attending Slippery Rock University for exercise science. She is a member of the Honors College and Health and Wellness Subcommittee. She plans to pursue a doctorate in physical therapy and become a pediatric physical therapist.
And now, the 2022 homecoming queen and king are Julia Fortner and Solomon Callahan. Congratulations to our king and queen, and congratulations to everyone on the homecoming court. You've been recognized by your classmates and teachers as exceptional young people. We welcome you back to the booth here at Art Wright Stadium as we just uh, enjoyed the homecoming halftime festivities. Congratulations to the homecoming court and to our new queen, Julia Fortner and Solomon Callahan, the 2022 homecoming king. And we're speaking of king and queens, um, their defense for the Grizzlies, they they played wonderful in terms of they've stopping this Falcon offense. They've been Trump. And here we are with band member of the week, Colin Moore. You're a senior? Yeah. Ooh, and you're also a drum major. Yeah. Why did you pick him? Colin's one of our most outstanding students. Um, not only is he a senior and a drum major, he plays saxophone in the band. He uh, will be inducted into TRIAM, our National Music Honor Society. He's a member of the speech and debate team and went to nationals. And he is the student uh, representative to the school board. And I honestly could keep going on and on. I mean, this kid does way too much. Yeah. <laughs> so what does it mean for you to be I always ask, you know, a senior, but really, I want to ask you, what is it like to be a drum major? I see you up there. You are like a cheerleader for them as well. 
Um, yeah, it's it's a lot, um, but it means everything to me. Getting to like help the band be into the game and keep their energy up is something that I really take pride in. Um, even more so than what we do on the field, I think that this is really important and it helps our team a lot. What advice do you have to somebody who wants to be a drum major? Um, keep your spirits up. It can be hard at times, but everything's worth it. Uh, but like my greatest bit of advice is to like enjoy every moment and every experience you have as it's what helps build a good leader and builds like really great character to do something like this. Well, this week's sponsor is Dulce. Oh, awesome. And they're dual because you can also use that at the Valley Cafe if you want. Sweet. So congratulations and thank you for picking him. I, I wanted to ask a drum major some questions, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much and congratulations and good luck on getting inducted. Thank you. Thank you. box showing blitz you got to get rid of the ball quick you're not going to run against that yeah, you see them here in the second half Robert the Falcons are bringing more pressure than we saw in the first half pressure on Fisher throw it over the middle picks up the first down will stack does with the ball and it's pushed out of bounds as he crosses the Grizzly 40 yard line chains will move Christian Latone runs Will Stack out of bounds, but again, Fisher doing a nice job finding Will Stack and Will just doing his thing. First down Grizzlies. Yeah, I actually saw uh, Kyle Figure come out of the backfield uncovered too. He was he was about five yards behind Will Stack. Figure with the carry. You know, Kyle's averaging anywhere from four to five yards per carry on, on first down. This is again that offensive line doing a great job, and I think. If Wandsworth is going to win this football game, this offensive line has got to take control right now. Yes. And as we're saying, try to wear the Finch, finch out, keep mm -hmm. punching them, hitting them, and, and keep yeah, in their face and, and win. You know, try to win each battle. If not, come back and hit them again. Luke Fisher throws off the Will Stack, who number nine, Vaughn, just comes up and hits him just as the ball comes in. and does a nice job breaking up the pass. Yeah, that's what you call in, in, in football terminology a haymaker, right? Yeah. I mean, that's it's just a hit. And you look at Vaughn, who's strong safety, but he's also the quarterback. Third down now and six for the Grizzlies. Big third down for this offensive unit. Nick Fisher now going to turn to Coach Todd, and we're going to change the play, likely changing the routes. Come quickly off to... Will Stack, who breaks two tackles, picks up the first down, and makes one of the Finch Falcons fall down and look silly, actually. Will Stack just well, making magic out there with his feet. Now let's take a look at this because, you know, obviously Will Stack is a crafty runner, but how about here on the left side is Davis Nye doing a smart thing by not extending his hands and getting that push in the back. And he avoids a penalty. Big first down for the Grizzlies. How do you feel? Good? Hey, there. How do you feel? We feel good. Oh, we feel so good. Oh. Hey, there. How do you feel? We feel good. Oh, we feel so good. Oh, we feel good. We feel so good. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, there. How do you feel? We feel good. Oh, we feel so good. Probably two down territory here, or uh, you kick he, a field goal. Yeah, I think you kick a field goal if you don't get the first down. You you know, certainly within Jack Dinwiddie's range. Sure. Plenty of football left in this one. Jack Dinwiddie's sitting up, uh, warming up on the sidelines. Play clock down to eight seconds. Fisher going to throw to the end zone. Touchdown, Grizzlies. Will Stack with a touchdown grab. Now, Will Stack is able to get a step 
on Deshaun Vaughn, their strong safety, beats him on a drag route across the end zone, and Fisher finds the former quarterback. Will Stack for a connection. You see the re replay? See, Stack is lined up on the right side. It's an out. I called it a drag. It's an out, and he gets a step on Deshaun Vaughn. Touchdown, Grizzlies. He was going to Will Stack the whole time. Yeah, you got to go for two here. Figure eight to the right of Fisher. You have Will Stack in motion. Fisher rolling right. Looking, throws, intended, and caught. Is that caught by Davis Nye? That no. Aaron Keating. Keating. Big two-point conversion. Well, like Keating with, I believe, the two touchdowns on the night, and now a two-point conversion. Very nicely done, yes. Now that is huge. huge. <laughs> Absolutely yes, huge. Is. And Fisher showing great patience here. He yep. knows pressure's coming from the backside by Robinson and just able to find Keating and... Yeah, threads it in. He gets, Tommy Arnold was just to the right of him, too. It looked like he was uncovered as well. Now that is... Quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Okay, yep. Vaughn now takes a pause, looks over for coach for the play call. Cheerleaders there trying to keep the fans. It's getting chilly tonight. Yeah, it's it? chilly. Quiets down the fans because their hands are in the pockets, trying to keep warm. Vaughn keeps it, being chased by the host of Grizzlies. Davis Nye does a great job knocking Vaughn out of out of bounds. Looks like there'll be a loss on the play. Now we're seeing the Davis Knight come off the edge every once in a while on the blitz, but you see the crowd, the, the student body and the band getting into the game. I didn't get the memo on the blackout. I, I, did, I did not see that as well, but I do have black on. We've got to do a better job. Okay. So it brings up third and seven. Yeah, two down territory now for the Falcons. Williams with the carry, bounces it left. He has some running room, has the first down. Referee and uh, goes down. Grizzlies, don't go! Oh, if you're yelling for the Grizzlies, you'll be red! If you're yelling for the Grizzlies, you'll go big red! Go big red! If you're yelling for the Grizzlies, you'll go! Go! If you're yelling for the Grizzlies, you'll be red! Big red! If ever needed one, this is it. Yeah, here. this is it. Yeah. yeah. Band looking to get the student body get loud and uh, tight trips formation to the off and they, yeah. just, and they just take a knee. They're going to go in overtime. It's uh, going to be the first for a while. I don't, it's been a while since we've been in overtime that I can think of. But overtime we will go. 21 all. It's been a fight. It's How about been, it, this? this is a, How about it? Yep, absolutely. I mean, when you talk about growth in this football program, a couple of weeks ago, Hudson comes in here, the Division Two, ranked number 14th in the state. Yep. Okay. We lose by 10. Yep. And uh, here we have the 15th ranked uh, Austin Town Fitch Falcons. We're tied at 21 going overtime. Yep. Absolutely. And, and again, like I said, this is a good measuring stick to see where we're at. It's also a good measuring stick. We have Luke Fisher in here again playing, uh, getting nothing against Will Stack. I thought he did a fabulous job offensively for us. But uh, Luke Fisher gives you, well, Stack back at receiver as well, as Absolutely, you see. Absolutely, yeah. Him, and it just makes us so much more dynamic. Uh, and hopefully we may get a chance at Medina down the road, maybe a third round of the playoffs, hopefully. But uh, it's a great so who game do you here like here, Who do you like here in overtime when you when you think you, you know you got a really short field? Um, Wadsworth with a, with a big offensive line. Falcons with, with a big defensive line. They've got, you know, a five-star recruit on the defensive line. We've been handling that. D yes, we D1 have. D1 recruit yes, most of the night. Yeah. He's yeah. gotten a little active here when they're moving around a little bit. But I, I, I like Figure I think yeah. our, I'll take our offensive line. I take I run right behind Reese. Yeah. And. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's calling me a homer for picking <laughs> us here, but I'd love to go behind Reese mm -hmm. and pull Tom Arnold and come around, let him 
lead block around in figure eight there. That would be a, such a lovely view there. But uh, well, yeah. you, you know, for for the Falcons, one you've got you know uh, uh, Deshaun Vaughn, their quarterback, and then DJ Williams has had a really good second half for. Actually, Excellent. he's been a workhorse as, as you mentioned yes. in the third quarter for the Falcons. So. It'll be interesting to see what happens. It, you know, obviously, it comes down to which defense is best here in the overtime period. Yep. I mean, I, our defense has been phenomenal almost all night. Uh, the outside edge is starting to come open, and you know, we're not sure exactly why that is, but uh, uh, we've got to shore that up. Otherwise, you know, their speed doesn't scare me down the field because it's only a short field now. Let's see who won the toss here. Looks like Austin Town Fitch is going to decline. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll defer. Wadsworth will get the ball. Yep. So, if correct, they we get the ball on the 20. Mm -hmm. Both teams get a possession, correct? Yep, both teams. Regardless if they score or not, they both get a chance to sc uh, score. Correct. So, if we get three, Finch gets to try right, to right. score. It's, it's, so. it's not that sudden death, you know, the yep. first team that scores. Yep. 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 So... Luke Fisher back in at quarterback. Figure A with the ball right up the middle, down to the goal line, and in for the touchdown. Touchdown a signal. Grizzly score. The most important point here is the extra point yeah. here. Yeah, this is huge. Look. And you know, take a look at the push of this offensive line to help Figure A get into the end zone. And and again, when you can rotate quarterbacks like Coach Todd can do between Fisher and Stack, you know what's going to happen. You got to know who's in the backfield and. Kyle Figure gets, he just lowers his head. He goes under the defense. And look at that big number 78 driving him home. That's Jared Pasco. Touchdown Grizzlies. Here's the PAT, Dinwiddie on. Pasco on the, for the hold. Kick is up and it's good. Very important. 28 21. Grizzlies lead in the first part of the overtime. The sound, how loud is Evans? Intercepted! Oh, intercepted by the Grizzlies. Just go down. Go down. Ian Kaufman with his first INT of the season. Now the biggest play of the season for the Grizzlies right there by the senior linebacker, Ian Kaufman. The first offensive mistake, putting yeah. the ball in turnover. Well, the pressure is coming from the backside, and it's Madigan. Figure. Figure. Yes, yes, and he wraps up. Ian the quarterback Kaufman. and Ian Kaufman. Kaufman. First thought was, can I score with this? <laughs> the second thought was, nah, I don't think I can. <laughs> no, you don't want to turn it over again no. and give it back. So, yeah, the best thing to do is just take a knee. And now the Grizzlies 
can methodically set up for, if they like to, a, a game-winning field goal, but you certainly want to get closer than what you are now. It would be a 37-yard attempt at this point. Yes. Who's the quarterback? Will Stack. Yep. Figure it right up the middle. Why not? Hard, hard five, six yards, just bursting up through the middle. Oh, that I ain't. Thrown towards the end zone. Turns around, catches it for the touchdown. Touchdown, Davis Nye. Well, that offensive line gives Fisher plenty of time, and what a throw by the senior quarterback as he throws it to the outside of Fisher, and Fisher turns around, makes the reception. Touchdown, Grizzlies. We'll take a look at it. Plenty of time to throw the football, and the ball's thrown on the outside. Oh. And what a tremendous effort there by Davis now. Yeah. Here, I thought they had to go for two, but they're kicking the extra point. That there you go. Extra point is up and is good. Grizzlies lead 35 28. Now. Receivers each side of the field for the Grizzlies. Arnold and Keating at the bottom of the screen. Stack inside receiver with Davis Knight at the top. Looking left, throws, going to the end zone, and intercepted. Game over. Falcons. Now that Falcons time the Falcons win. brought five, and we had one on one coverage on the outside, and just. Not enough on the football. Nope. It's intercepted by the Falcons, and they walk away. Stunning this grizzly crowd, 42 to 35. One last look at it. Fisher's just, he's locked on his outside receiver. That's Davis Nye, and Let's see, was some hand pushing there, yeah. there, and the interception made there by Davion Pritchard, who redeems himself as he was called with pass interference on the previous two plays on the near sideline. and. What a football game here tonight at Art Wright Stadium between two quality programs, my friend. Two great programs. But we played tooth and nail with them the whole night long. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it yeah. says a lot about this football team, as, as we've said all season long. And uh, there is still, my friend, plenty of football left. Yeah, plenty of um, football left. Yep. We've got next week North Royalton. The week after that, we will be at Twinsburg. Again, WCTV will not be there. But we will yeah. be back with you the following week in round one of the playoffs. And you know, yeah. I and believe we still have coverage of the Twinsburg. They'll, they'll stream it in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got a wonderful camera crew upstairs. Yeah. Aiden... Uh, Yuzinski and uh, Drew Bixler downstairs, uh, John Bernard, and for Robert Rickenbacker, I am Mike Elkins. And uh, once again, the final tonight, Fitch 42, Wadsworth 35. Good night, everybody. watching WCTV, Wadsworth Community Television.